my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those that are watching on TV or those that are watching on YouTube or also on Facebook. Um, remember, these are our, our social media handles. Please, uh, for one, connect with us so that way you can stay on top of all the shows. But most importantly, connect with us so you can uh, communicate with us. We want to make sure that you, if you have questions, if you have something that you agree with, that you disagree, whatever the case may be, we want to be able to have the opportunity to communicate with you. Number one, it's a community-based show. No matter if you're an employer or an employee, it's going to apply to you at some level. So please feel free to connect and also communicate with us, and we'll make sure that we get back to you. Twitter, Facebook, and also on YouTube. So let's get into today's show. We are starting a new series, so please make sure you follow the YouTube channel to, to catch up on the series before, because all these series have a way of playing on top of each other. Okay, so this series here today is called Your Communication Style is Working Against You. Now, I could have did the right thing and could have forewarned you about executive talk if this is your first time wa watching it. It is a biblical show, which is awesome. It also is going to tell you some truths. It's going to hit home in a lot of different areas. This is not a show that you're going to be able to point outwardly. It's always going to be point inwardly. You're going to have to confront some things specific that are happening in your business, that are happening in your personal life. The great thing about these shows, for, again, for the first timers, I also get an opportunity to learn as well. This, this show title itself, just to give you a little, little understanding, your communication style is working against you. Something I had to realize and recognize my whole life. And even present day, now that I'm doing this show, I'm actually even more accountable than I was yesterday for, for actually walking in this show. So I want to make sure that you, uh, you understand it's not pointing towards you. It's also pointing towards me as well. That's how we're all involved. This is the Lord's show, and we're going to follow his direction. So let's get into it. When you think about communication, what's the first thing that you think about? Now, there's probably a lot of us that say, I'm a good communicator. You know, I really speak my mind, and if I don't like you, I'll tell you. You know, if I love you, I'll tell you. You know, we think we're all good communicators. That's the weird thing about life is that nobody comes to you and says, I'm at fault. I'm not good at that. Majority of people just feel like they're good. So let's go ahead and we're going to address it. And by the time we come to the end of the show, I want you to ask yourself, how well of a communicator are you? Okay, so let's go ahead and, and again, for first timers, we're always going to start in Genesis. We're going to start in the origination of communication. So in Genesis 1, 6 through 8, and God said, let there be a vault between the waters and separate water from the, from the sea. Um, so God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. So now, in that scripture, one thing I learned about and understood about this communication here is that when God said something, it came to. Okay? This, and for those that have been following the show for quite some time, this will make a little bit of connection towards what, what do you speak into your business? Okay, one of my older shows, but nonetheless, God spoke to it, and God affirmed it, and it was so. And there's, there's a connection with all these things that happened in Genesis. Okay? And God said in Genesis 1, 9 through 10, And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let the dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground um, land, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Okay? Now let's go into Genesis 1.26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, to rule over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the air, over the livestock, and over all the earth itself, and every creature that crawls upon it. Now, why are the, all those scriptures make sense? Obviously, we skipped a few verses, verses here and went to 26 when God made mankind in his own image. But let's think about all the things God created before. Okay, let's think about this communication and how it plays out. Although God just, he's spoken to things and he wanted to create things. Okay, one thing that God knew 
is that he can be trusted to, to maintain everything that he produced. It wasn't just words that God spoke. It was actions that were, were able to back everything up. God did not create anything and say, oh, man, well, how am I going to manage that? Oh, maybe, maybe mankind will figure it out when I create, when I create mankind. Okay, there is a communication. There is accuracy. The accuracy in God's creating while he was creating was the fact that he was able to follow through with his communication. Okay, so when God said, let there be light or let, there, let the water on the sky be gathered, and it was so, guess what? It was so. It was concrete. When God speaks, it's actual. It's fact, you can guarantee it's, it's a trusted uh, speech. It's trusted again because the words were going to meet the actions. God was going, he spoke into it. It was so, but God also had the actions to actually make sure that it stayed in place. Now, fast forwarding to Genesis 1 26, when we talk about, then God said, let us make man in our image. Part of that image was to make mankind to where when he spoke, he or she spoke, guess what? What you said was what it should have been and that you have the actions to follow through. Okay, and then now let's back up again. In this, is God bearing fruit? Is he producing good fruit? Absolutely. Because of how he communicated and the actions were able to, it was a trusted speech. Because the communication, the actions met together. Making mankind, having mankind be in that image was to be able to, so everything he created and spoke into had life into it, okay? And that the words and the actions matched. That's the communication style. That was the high level communication style. That was, that was part of the righteousness that God made and handed over his authority to. Okay, so part of that authority handing over is, again, I'm going to hand you over from generation, it's the same thing, seed to seed. Okay, mankind was seed. So guess what? I'm going to give you the same benefits and the same abilities that I have. And the same truth and trust and speech and communication that he has. So that's what this is all, that's another level and element that happened in Genesis. So now... Um, Genesis 127, so God created mankind in his own image and the image of God. He created them male and female. He created them. That is huge. This is where the shift starts to happen. Okay, the, the scripture below is God blessed him and told him to be fruitful and so on and so forth. Now, why was he able to, ha to give them the ability to and be, being blessed to be fruitful? Because their communication, because of all their actions were in line. There was nothing out of line about Adam and Eve before then. As a matter of fact, it got to the point where they were both naked and they felt no shame. They had no idea that they were naked. Okay? So there was a vulnerability that kept that communication, that trusted communication, both words and actions in place. And that vulnerability was what it was. They were in their spirit. Now, in Genesis 3.1, this is, again, this is a, another learning element for me. I didn't come into this with knowledge, understanding this before. So this is, this is raw, authentic show. This is an authentic moment here where now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild an animals the Lord God made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Now, let's go ahead and go to this top sentence here. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals. So understand something about the enemy. Was the enemy not upset with God that the fact that he didn't give the same authority that he gave to Adam? Absolutely. He was, he was operating in rage right at that moment. In this craftiness, understand God made Adam and Eve from seed to seed. So the only way that the enemy can come and disturb that seed to seed and change and alter their experience is through this craftiness. So I want you to think about something is when Adam and Eve 
were under this, were under this place, they became crafty. And watch what happened. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden of the cool of the day. And they hid from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now think about that. Think about the trail. Remember earlier in Genesis, um, I believe, 128, they were naked and felt no shame. Now, all of a sudden, they became crafty and started trying to hide from God. Everything has altered their whole experience in life and how they do things and how they see life has changed. They now see flesh. They now see they have a new knowledge with them. They have now become crafty, just like the enemy. Okay, the fact that they're doing this, is it coming? Can, can he see us? All of a sudden, they got crafty. He, guys, are you serious? Are you really, you're going to hide from me? As if I don't know where you are. I mean, really think about that. But in this place, things have changed. Now they have become crafty. I did not, again, I did not recognize this as I keep on reading through Genesis and stuff. Did not recognize the fact that they shifted into a crafty state of being. Now their communication, now their body language has changed. And before we get into the definition of communication, let's think about how God or how Adam and Eve started to communicate uh, with God. Think about that. Their communication went from high level, speaking in an authority, speaking under blessing, speaking under this, this righteousness. And now all of a sudden it went to low level where, hey, that girl over here, she's like, hey, that, that serpent over there deceived me. They're all blaming each other. And the serpent's looking like, yeah, I did it. What you going to do? Right? So there, there was a whole, lot of, a whole lot of stuff that has changed in that moment. And again, in that fallen experience, they have now become crafty. And now their communication skills, their authenticity about themselves has changed. And once your authenticity changes about yourself, as long as you lose that, there's no way that you can communicate specifically. There's no way that you can communicate on a high level. It's impossible because you're operating on the fallen fleshly level. So now let's go ahead into that definition of communication. Communication is simply the act of transferring information from one place, person or group to another. Every communication involves at least one sender, a message, and a recipient. So, with that being said, let's start with the, the, the top of the definition. is a simple act. You see how we, our understanding of communication really is? Again, another transparency moment. I never look up the definition of communication anymore. I'm under the same understanding. It's a simple act of transferring information from one place, person, or group to another. I'm like, yeah. So because it says it's simple, guess what? We're loose with our words. So we're falling because of our flesh. And now we have a definition of a simple act of transferring. So is there any like real authority in our speech and understanding? No, we, it's very simple. So how do I know it's simple? Let's go ahead and fast forward to a journey to marriage. Okay, this is how we're, this is how for your first timers, create that level of association. Man, woman, you guys line each other, you guys communicate, you guys say, yes, I love you, let's go on dates, and so on and so forth, or things are happening. Now, in between this time frame, you guys are doing this. Now, what does that mean? Are you guys going on the roller coaster, going to eulogies? No. The point that I'm making here is sometimes you're on. Sometimes your communication and your words, your words and your actions match. But then sometimes your words are up here and all of a sudden your actions are down here. And both of you guys are like, huh. And again, nobody's exempt in this, but you guys sit back and look, look at each other and say, huh. Okay, but again, there's selfish ambition in the dating phase, isn't there? Because you're like, you know what, my agenda is it's time for me to get married. You know, I got some things we got we to gotta do. So, you say, I'll bypass it. It's okay. All right. Now, 
You bypass it, and guess what? Now, now it's the, the, the Jones's family. You get into this marriage, and when you're in a dating phase, because selfish ambition has taken over, ridden those moments, now you're in the household with that, with that. Now, all of a sudden, that communication actually matters. Did you know that when your words and your actions don't match in the household, there is death that's taking place? Because a lot of people, majority of people, we do, we do things with our eyes, don't we? We're like, oh, you, you, you really going to work out? Right. Oh, that's right. You're going to. You, 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 you're, you're going to take out the trash, right? <laughs> yeah, doubtful. There's no way in heck you're going to do that. I'll end up taking out the trash because I know you won't do it. Now, we, those are playful conversations, but guess what? You've already actually talking about the association to how that person is appearing to you. It's showing up to you. You're actually speaking about a person's communication and follow through. Again, I brought up light circumstances now when it comes to those big circumstances in the marriage. Guess what? Uh-oh, you can't break through those. Now, what is little Johnny here receiving? Little Johnny, and even the parents possibly don't know, it's a communication issue, but little Johnny like, oh man, mom really hates dad. Dad really talks crazy to mom. Is that what I'm supposed to be? Is that what marriage is supposed to look like? Huh. Now communication has gone to the second tier, to the second generation. Okay, so it never stops. The enemy loves the fact that we don't, he loves this definition. It's a simple act of transferring information. Oh, a simple act? Are you kidding me? Okay, all right, sure. We'll show you how simple it is. So if you're looking for where some challenges might be in your marriage, what are you communicating? Again, back in the start of the show, are you a good communicator? I'm bringing that up again for you to really digest that. Now, don't turn off the TV. Don't turn off the channel. Own it. Own this moment. Now, John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and to destroy. He loves this factor because all of those moments hits a major thing that's coming up. But there's a destruction that's happening. The fact that the level of conversation of, well, you're not really going to do it. Well, you're really not going to do this. You're just talking. Has already set this, the tone of killing and destroying. It's already, there's something already in your marriage. So now, back to Genesis 3.8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God. As he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the presence of the Lord, God among the trees of the garden. Understand something. This is still present. Because the majority of us are walking around unhealed. We not really sacrificed and gave our lives to Christ and allowed that to follow. So understand, it still exists. This moment still exists. So has the communication gotten any better? No, because we're, if you're operating from hiding and shame, have you really? Because at the root, you, it's, it's always at the root of whatever it is that really matters. So if this is still the root, are you really communicating well? Have you gotten any further? So the acts of the flesh are 19 or, Gen, or Galatians 5, 19 through 21. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debunkery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, think about this. If this is the root of where your life is at, you're still hiding from, the, from God, and you're operating in the flesh, because you can't hide from God and be blessed and be in the spirit all in the same breath. Okay? So if you're operating from the flesh, do you think your communication is coming off the way that you feel in your head is coming off? When there's a, a ton of people that you come in contact with that are receiving your communication? Think about that for a minute. Digest that. 
Because if there's lawlessness in your actions, there's lawlessness in your communication. Think about that again. If there's lawlessness in your action, that means there's lawlessness in your communication. You can't alter one part and exchange it. Actually, you can, but you can't get away with it for very long. It will come to get you. Now, in this place, there is something that we end up developing over time. Little Johnny didn't know what was going on, but little Johnny was told, don't, don't, worry, about, don't worry about what I do, just do what I say. You know where that's coming from? That's a communication habit. What we do and what we say really don't have to match. There's really no authority under if it doesn't match. So that you're saying, well, just do what I say. Don't worry about what we do and what we show. It doesn't matter. Just don't look at that. Just do what I say. If that's your ownership style, this is where you're at. There's a communication habit that still exists in your communication. You feel like you're leaving something like, okay, yeah, I'm a, that's right. That's an authoritarian. That's a dictatorship lifestyle. That's a Pharisee lifestyle that's happening. Because what we do does matter. Because if we, if we learn from God and how he does things, they all match in the beginning, didn't they? So there's an expectation that he has of us for our communication. There's an expectation that we have, a, have of each other for these, th these things to match. But in, typically they don't. And what's worse about us when it comes to communication is that even though we may not match, we expect everybody else to match around us. That's where we're at. That's how fallen we are. Is that your experience? Have you noticed that? And this big word right here means everything. The enemy comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. Let's take it back here. What has been destroyed in this conversation over and over again? The fact that you keep on saying that you're going to do something. You're going to achieve this. Because, you know, ultimately it sounds like you sold me. Now, if you're a car salesman, this, I'm not talking about you directly, but this is part of the issue with, with the car salesman. You didn't really look out for my family and the fact you put me in a Camaro because the budget fit. Maybe your commissions were right. But I have a family and it's in Colorado and there's snow outside and that's my main car. Okay, yes, I love the car, may look cute in the car, but at the same time it's not practical all throughout the year. So now I have a little circumstance going on. I want you to think about what's going on in that. So that's kind of, that's a business example. Again, car salesman, that's not, but I want you to think about the whole picture. Yes. Yeah, we, you, you sold me in here. Yeah, you're going to do all this stuff. And I believed you because I, I went over my instincts. Because, wow, your, your action is like, what, what the heck? But I, I went over that because I wanted this. But man, now it's to a point where now we're in the house with each other every day. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. I actually get, you start getting to the point where you don't trust them. You're now, you're no longer trusted. Both men and women can fall into this pitfall and no longer trust it. And once you get to that level of no longer trust it, there is something dynamic that has happened to your lifetime and what i mean by that see that trust is this the enemy will attack these areas now everybody can when i say the past i want you to think about it because the past you'll say well yeah that was me a year ago understand this once you start a habit a year ago is it possible that you can still today still be doing the same habit? 
So let's say you start a habit yesterday, if we want to get more relevant to the present, but it's still the past. Could you start a habit tomorrow or yesterday and have it show up in your thoughts today? Absolutely. See, the thing about when you live in death and when, you're, when, you, don't, when you haven't trusted the Lord and you, you go through your earlier years in life, there's something about you that becomes, you're, you're just, you know, you can just go through anything. I got time. You know, you, you know how it is when you're young. You just go through anything. It's whatever. You're invincible. That's what I was looking for. So you're invincible in the past, but all these things have this weird way of setting a reputation for you. How do I know? When your past meets you in the present. Oh, Johnny, is that you? Is that you from, you went to, you went to Eagle Crest High School. Okay. Yeah, nobody, if you went to Eagle Crest, I'm not talking about you, not judging you, just throwing out of school. Weren't you, didn't you used to drink a ton? Yes, that is you. Oh, so the past is irrelevant, huh? You already said a dynamic tone from back here. But guess what? Now you're trying to say, yeah, I'm a business owner. Now I'm, I'm doing this thing, you know, I'm, I'm doing really good with my life. Oh, that's good. And you get that look. It's because they're like, yeah, right. Really? You haven't changed a bit. So your past is still here, which alters your future. You've already set a tone for your future. The future business, the future relationship, relationships that you have, because something has happened with people's understanding of your character. It messes with your own specific mind. It messes with your heart. You can try to ward it off or work out and try to say, yeah, I feel better. You know, I'm, I'm better. Forget them. No, it bothers you. There's something still showing up. But because we don't think the past will show up in our present, we just kind of keep on doing things. Again, leave comments. Let's talk about this because again, this should hit some areas. It's easier to point to somebody else, but it should hit some areas personally. Let's talk about those. Please send us a message. We'll make sure that we get back to you. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. But in the meantime, I have to get back to work. You guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.